And one of the components in the data story includes a parent perception piece. And so when we were analyzing that data at the end of the year, one of the dips that we've seen now for two years in a row that we are concerned about is our, the perception of little school out in the community. And so somebody had suggested, it'd be really great if we had like a PR team. And they, it was sort of a joke at the time, but it got my wheels turning because I think it's something that we need to address. Um, we wanted, when we sat down, to have this year try to get at least bi-weekly press releases in a good light. And so far, Mary's been keeping track and we're slightly ahead on the average. So every other week we're getting good publicity in the papers. Facebook is amazing. And, you know, I, I hope to see us more on there and, and posting stuff. In tonight's superintendent's update, I would like to present to you, the board, and to the public an update of facts on several issues that were brought up to the school board at our last regular meeting. I would like to remind the board that the issues that I am commenting on are not for discussion, but for presenting factual information. The board may want to place any of these topics on a future agenda. I wanted to clear up some misinformation that's been brought to the attention of the school board at our last board meeting September the 10th by a member of the public at the call of the public and was then quoted in the Bisbee Daily Review. This community member had informed the board that Bisbee High School had received a $22,000 grant to help teachers with work involved in transitioning to the new Common Core standards. This community member stated that the money did not go to teachers, that it went to the salaries of the administration. The facts are there there was never any grant given to the Bisbee High School for the purpose of transitioning to the Common Core. The only grant that we had received was specifically for the Common Core training was in Race to the Top. That Race to the Top money was in the amount of $5,000 that was given district-wide and did not go to any administrative salaries. attacks upon board members, staff personnel, or other persons in attendance or absent by individuals who address the board are discouraged. Presenters are cautioned that statements or representations concerning others that convey an unjustly unfavorable impression may be subject to, um, may subject the presenter to civil action for defamation. For those of you that don't know me, I'm at Qualibet, a Bisbee resident and director of the Transition to Teaching Grant with the University of Arizona, on which Bisbee is one of our strongest district partners. I was also a co-signer on the guest editorial in the Bisbee Observer, calling on the board to be more actively involved in the decision-making process and to look into the concerns of the citizens of Bisbee when it comes to the schools. Because of that letter, the superintendent called my boss at the University of Arizona to accuse me of unprofessionalism. Luckily, the dean is a strong believer in democracy, free speech, and the responsibility of citizenship, and suggested to the superintendent that only if I had evoked the name of the university would my behavior be unprofessional. I am here tonight to clear the air in hopes that the strong partnership that has been built with Bisbee High School can continue. The goals of our grant are to recruit, prepare, and support the retention of STEM teachers. Bisbee High School has two transition to teaching fellows. Last month, I had asked to speak to the board regarding the work of the grant at Bisbee High School. As requested, I submitted material in advance to the district regarding what I wanted to discuss with the board. Shortly before the last meeting, I received an email from the superintendent saying he and the board president had pulled my item from the agenda. I had wanted to raise a concern over a board action regarding the continuation of a district who provided stipend for TTT fellows at the high school. The concerns I had at that point were narrow and focused. 
When I was not allowed for discussion with the board, I decided to co-sign the guest editorial because it had expressed my new concerns after that incident. I have spent 30 years as a teacher educator working closely with school districts across the country and around the world. I have served as a consultant to superintendent and principal search committees. In addition, I have challenged districts on their placement policies and sports budgets. I have always done this in public at board meetings. I have never, in all those 30 years, had an agenda item pulled from a board meeting. Now, I come from Maine, where detailed and complete school budgets are published and available in all town offices. School budget decisions are made in public meetings where the public question line items in the budget. These public discussions often went on till late at the night, but at the end of the evening, the public was assured that their concerns were heard and were often reflected in a revised budget. Now, New England is known for its strong participatory approach to governance, but this background apparently has still prepared me to work in this community. I have asked our staff on the grant to continue working with the district, and it is my hope that our work will continue. But tonight I want to share this information with you so that you will have a better understanding of my actions. It is my hope that this incident will reinforce to the board that community input is central to the successful work of the school district, and that limiting access to the board only breeds suspicion and ill will in the community. 